I want to start with addressing the 15 counties that are entering extreme risk today. Moving any county into extreme risk is not a decision we take lightly. That's one reason why, a few weeks ago, we updated the state metrics to require that hospital capacity be a trip wired across before reimposing the extreme risk rules. But here's the reality Oregon is facing right now. Cases are widespread, driven by new, more contagious variants. Oregon leads the nation for our rate of increase in cases over the last two weeks. In fact, this is the fifth straight week Oregon has recorded case increases of 20% or more. Our hospitalizations have nearly doubled what they were a week ago. While fewer seniors are being hospitalized, thanks to vaccinations, COVID-19 is now knocking more younger people off their feet. The portion of hospitalized cases of people 18 to 34 has increased by almost 50%. I was presented with data showing two paths Oregon could take, one in which we took no additional action and stood by while more people died from this disease, or another that required a temporary tightening of restrictions for certain counties, but could save hundreds of lives and prevent as many as 450 hospitalizations over the next three weeks. As your governor, I chose to save lives. I've invited OHSU's Dr. Peter Graven to share that data with you because it is truly eye-opening. And I recognize that this puts many Oregon businesses and working families in a difficult place. So I've worked with the legislature to secure $20 million in urgent relief for Oregon businesses impacted by extreme risk. We can get this aid quickly in the hands of our businesses, and I encourage all impacted businesses to apply for assistance. Economic relief is something I can do as your governor to help Oregonians impacted by this fourth surge. What I can't do is bring back someone's life lost to this virus. That's why, as hard as this is, we must act immediately. There is some good news. The same scientific modeling that predicted increased deaths and hospitalizations if we didn't enter extreme risk also shows that over the course of the next two to three weeks, based on current vaccination rates, we can get ahead of these variants. Following that trajectory, we should be able to lift restrictions statewide and return to a sense of normalcy by the end of June.